Ho 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 everybody, it's almost time for gaming Christmas. E3 season is in full swing which means it's prediction time. And while Nintendo's general unpredictability makes it hard to get a read on them, that's exactly what makes trying to pin down their plans all the more fun. So let's see if your pop star champ can foresee some of Nintendo's madness. First, before getting into any game specifics, I'm predicting the Direct will be similar in structure to past E3s, but with Doug Bowser being the one to walk us through it as Veggie did in the E3s before him. And I bet they're going to capitalize on his name by incorporating a bunch of Bowser elements in the transitions between Doug and the trailers. Now on to the games. I'll go over every single one that we have at least some knowledge on and save the potential new game predictions and hopes for later. I'm also technically guessing the order these games will appear in, but I know that the order could very well be different in the actual direct. It's just how I think that they would transition from game to game. The first game we'll see is Link's Awakening. It'll get a quick little overview showing all the different areas and how they look in their more modern style. And like other Zelda remakes, we might see a fundamental change that they made to make the game more convenient to play in the modern age. And it'll end with an official release date for some time in September. Next, we'll get more Fire Emblem Three Houses information, this time focusing on the village and general conflict. And despite stuff that's otherwise safe prediction, they'll also mention potential DLC, either in the form of free new characters slash units slash students, or paid story expansions all wrapped up in the reassurance of its July 26th release date. After two game announcements, there will be a montage reel of games that are worth mentioning, but not dedicating much time to like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 and Cans of Hyrule which are both set to head for the Switch this summer. And while this game could very well have its own in-depth trailer, I feel like Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games is also going to be a part of the quick flyby reel. It could definitely have its own extensive showing, but I have a feeling that it will be pushed to the side in the meantime and be shown in a different direct, or by Sega, one of the two. After the montage, we'll then roll into a quick Super Mario Maker 2 trailer that hints at future DLC, like new themes based off the extra game style section we saw in the last Mario Maker 2 direct, and hopefully an update that patches in the ability to play online co-op with friends. Keeping up with the Marios, the next segment will be on Luigi's Mansion 3. We'll get a huge load of information on the game's plot, like why Luigi and what seems like Mario, Toad, and Peach came to the Towering Hotel in the first place, as well as new gameplay with the new additions to Luigi's Poltergeist like the Plunger Launcher and likely many more gadgets. The game will be given its full name, let's say Luigi's Mansion 3 Hotel of Horrors, and will release sometime in late October. The next trailer will be another big one. This is where we'll finally see the new Animal Crossing Switch game in action. I'm not too familiar with the series myself so I can't predict any specific new feature that we can see, but it'll present the very basics of how your everyday lives would go along with one cool new gimmick, as well as how it's integrated with Nintendo Switch Online and how you might interact with others. And there's been a little bit of unease regarding whether or not the game will be delayed, but I'm sure it'll still come out this year, and in fact, I predict it will release sometime in September. Following that reveal, we'll see Game Freak make a quick appearance as they comment on Pokemon Sword and Shield, as well as possibly the other Project Town. They will show some highlight clips from the recent Pokemon Direct like the Wild Areas and Diamaxing, and encourage people who are at E3 to check out the demo where I'm sure those two elements will be playable. Then, to complete that trifecta of games who have only been in one direct and still have much more to show us, we'll get a good look at Astral Chain. The trailer will show us more of the plot and a bit of how the current setting and way of life came to be, which will lead into the battle system and the ultimate objective of the game. I'm guessing there's also going to be some vocal theme playing throughout the trailer and it'll end to be seen in the game's August 30th release date. Hopefully whatever they show convinces me to buy the game, because I'm pretty interested, but I just need one more trailer to completely convince me to get it. As for the last game they talk about, it's the one that almost always has to have the last word in any Nintendo Direct if it gets any significant mention. The Direct will end with Smash as they reveal not one, but two DLC fighters, along with returning modes to accompany them like Home Run Contest or Break the Targets. One character will get a bunch of attention, as said person will be available in the very near future, if not shadow dropped that exact day, and the other will have more of a background role, 
like the looking at all the battles the first DLC character is having and smiling knowing they'll be joining in on the fun soon enough as well. As for the first character, it'll be Mario's N64 brother platformer in arms, Banjo-Kazooie. With all the other recent Banjo talk going around, I'm almost certain he's going to be in. As for the second character, I'm not too sure on who it could be, so I'm going to give both a prediction and a wish. Who I'm predicting is Rex from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and yeah, his Mii Fighter costume as a consolation prize into not making it into the base roster makes his chances seem non-existent, but considering how well Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has done for itself, and how much of a surprise it would be at this point because of the Mii Fighter costume, I think Vex could still be possible. As for a character I'm really wishing for, I really, really, really wanted to be Sora from Kingdom Hearts. I'd love it if he made it in, and it wouldn't be too hard for him to be able to stand on his own two feet without any Disney content. I mean, if you could take his keyblade chain from Mickey Mouse's head to a crown, it would be pretty easy. Then have all the spirits be cage exclusive people, it'd be perfect. Now that I've gone through nearly everything that we know about, time to list up where I don't believe will show up. The games that I don't think will be present in this direct, or at least won't be given a full segment, are Bayonetta 3, Steam Spoon Festival, Metroid Prime 4, and Damon X Machina. As for why I don't believe these games will be in the direct outside of a quick glimpse is, Metroid Prime 4 had to undergo a complete redo, and I doubt they showed another early phase title card teaser. Damon X Machina has already gotten a good E3 showing at last year's E3, and doesn't really need another. Steam Soon Festival was just a quick mention in the last general direct, so I'm sure it'll only be seen for a short moment at best here. And Bayonetta 3 feels a bit too similar to Astral Train, in the general sense of them both being a 3D beat em up, doing the exact same show after over a year of little info and not even a release date in comparison to Astral Train. So it would probably be best if it was shown in a different direct at a later point, in my opinion. With all that wrapped up, let's start the blind dark tiles of predicting what brand new games could be revealed. Now despite there already being two Mario spin-offs coming our way, I think there are two other possible Mario announcements that Nintendo could make. One being another Mario sports game, which could either launch really soon this coming August, or further off in the 2020. As for which sport they cover, I'd do anything for another Strikers game, but I think they'll go with Golf instead. The other Mario game would definitely be released next year and I'm thinking that game will be Super Mario Odyssey 2. I'm sure that not only does Nintendo want to follow up on the success of that game, much like they did with Galaxy and Galaxy 2, but also based off of all the official concept art that the game seemed to have, predicting all the ideas that they weren't able to use in the first game. Well, not all of them would be doable in Odyssey 2, creating a game like that seems to create a mountain of ideas which could bang out another game in 3 years easy. I think it's very doable, but I guess we'll see soon enough. Another surprise that I'm hoping for is for a Kirby spinoff, either in the form of Kirby Air Ride 2, or what I think would be even cooler would be a Kirby RPG. It would take place in the Dream Kingdom from Team Kirby Clash Deluxe, and it would be like an old timey adventure with Kirby and a bunch of the side characters as a follow up from their returning Kirby Star allies. A game like that would be a great way to utilize all the Dream friends again on the way to the new Kirby platformer as well as even be a sort of pseudo-sequel to how everyone got to be the way they were before their introduction in the mainline Kirby games. And I say pseudo-sequel because I imagine these events don't actually take place in the past of the Kirby games, it'd be more like an alternative storybook universe, that sort of thing. My next prediction doesn't relate to any particular game, but instead a general service from Nintendo. Yes, I'm thinking Nintendo Switch Online will be mentioned here, and it will reveal that SNES games will be coming on the anniversary of the service for an increased price, up to $25 instead of $20, and potentially more info will be revealed at a later date. And my final out of left field prediction is we'll see a trilogy remaster of either Pikmin or Metroid Prime, along with a comment of their fourth entries coming sometime in the future. As for why I think such an announcement is unlikely, is ever since Nintendo entered the Switch era, despite there being so many ports coming to the system, they haven't revealed any first party ports in their A3 directs, and remasters I feel fall into a similar category. The lap pattern is exactly why I made this position, as they could break that trend at any time, and both of these series would be a good tr choice to break that trend with. In Pikmin's case, Pikmin 4 has apparently been in development for a while now, but its progress is anyone's guess so an official statement made out in the open saying it'll come eventually would be able to build confidence in an eventual release. And for Metroid, it could act as a consolation prize after Prime 4 had to restart development. And those are my predictions of what presents we may see under the Nintendo Christmas tree that is their E3 Direct. 
While I don't expect everything I mentioned to happen altogether, I do think each and every prediction by themselves have a good chance of happening. Just gotta tune in to see what we're getting this gaming Christmas. And what do you think we'll see this E3 from Nintendo? Comment down below what announcements you think may or may not happen, as well as what you'd love to see happen no matter how unlikely it may be. And hopefully I'll see you after E3 to discuss it all. Until then, I'm warping out.